All right, everyone, we need to talk about these Marvel rumors. Okay, so in the last 24 hours or so, I'm hearing some concerning stuff, some stuff that has me confused and perplexed when it comes to the MCU uh, with what's going on behind the scenes at Marvel. So Daniel RPK, a scooper who has been reliable as far as I know for a while, he has a few tidbits of information about Marvel. And let's go over what that is before I talk about what I think the problem is. Because I have to be honest, I'm very concerned and confused. The first bit is that Marvel wants to stop taking risk and focus on making hit movies. So somehow they have like a, this crystal ball where they can predict what they're doing, if it's going to be a hit or not, um, without taking any risk whatsoever. I, I, I have no idea what that looks like, and it absolutely doesn't make any sense uh, based on these next three rumors as I'm going to dismantle in this video. All right, so the next three things are some of the projects that we're working on are off the table now. What are those three projects? Uh, well, one of them is Eternals 2. So apparently Eternals 2 is off the table right now. Um, I'm still not totally sure what the situation with that movie is. It was released in a weird spot. Um, the movie was weird in terms of like the advertisements and stuff. A lot of people couldn't latch onto the characters. That The advertisement promotions and setup for that film were kind of problematic to begin with. However, I think it's like a movie where if you go back and you watch it now, you'll see that it is an actual good film. And a lot of people that have watched it after the fact have been like, it wasn't as bad as I remembered, or I was pleasantly surprised that, you know, I hadn't seen it before. I'm seeing it now. And I really like it. A lot of people didn't watch it a few years ago. They're watching it now. Um, I think the movie is going to be a sleeper film for, for Marvel. Like later on, people will start to really appreciate it. Either way, it's off the table for now. Out of the three movies that we're going to talk about, that's the one that I, I kind of understand why they're pushing it back. But I hope that we do get a chance to see those characters continue. The, the second movie is Ant-Man and the Wasp 4. Now, this was going to be a fourth Ant-Man movie. Um, obviously, we just had Quantumania that underperformed at the box office and was tied up with the King stuff, Jonathan Major. So, uh, you know, because I'll be honest, I don't know how much of that changed people's perception of the film because I happen to have enjoyed the movie. Um, I've told people before that I had a good time with it. It wasn't great. It wasn't awful. It was just a really solid movie. Uh, however, those movies, the Ant-Man movies, one and two, both performed pretty well. They weren't like massive, huge billion dollar films, but they performed well. So coming into the third movie, including Kang, including the quantum realm, there was a lot of things in favor of that movie. It's almost as if Marvel thought that movie was going to be a hit film. So again, this idea of focusing on just hits, you mean to tell me you didn't think that Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania was going to be a hit? It was the third movie. There wasn't anything really risky about that film. I guess you could say changing it into sort of a big boombastic movie with Ant-Man uh, in it. Maybe that was the risky part. Overall, though, it didn't seem like a big risk to me. It seemed like that movie had a lot of things working in its favor going into its release. Um, it just didn't resonate with people. And there's another reason why uh, that movie and other Marvel properties and Disney properties aren't doing as well. I'll cover that in a second. But let's talk about the third one, which is Captain Marvel 3. Now, I don't know how we could get a Captain Marvel 3, considering we never got a Captain Marvel 2. Okay, we got Captain Marvel 1, and then we got a team-up movie with Captain Marvel, Monica, and Kamala. That was a team-up movie. It wasn't Captain Marvel 2, The Marvels. They made it very clear that the movie was called The Marvels, and it was a sequel to a bunch of different things. It wasn't just Captain Marvel 2. And I think people need to understand that. That's something that Disney made a mistake on. I believe Marvel made a mistake on this. I wanted to see a Captain Marvel 2. Okay, I have no issue with the other two characters. I absolutely love them, but I would have loved to have seen a proper sequel to Captain Marvel. With that being said, I think the movie was really good. I had a fun time with the movie, but you have to get people into the box office first. You have to get them to get up out of their seats and go see the movie, which leads me into another issue with that film was the strike that was happening. You know, all of these issues with the studios not paying people properly led to that movie not getting proper advertisement. And we see that that definitely impacted that movie's sales. It 100% affected that movie's profits because people are watching it now on streaming and saying it was great. I can't tell you how many times I saw people on Twitter, on social media saying, hey, I watched the Marvels. I can't believe that I didn't go see it in theaters. Did you listen to all the people on the internet that told you it wasn't good instead of actually going and seeing the movie? All right, so 
With all that being said, let's unpack what I think is happening and a lot of the problems with Marvel right now that don't have a lot to do with the creative aspects of the films and the TV shows. Because even though we've had some stuff that I think wasn't great, I don't think that's the primary problem. One of the big issues, biggest issues that's affecting Disney right now, it's bigger than Marvel, it's bigger than, than all the little individual pieces of the pie, is Disney+. Plus. Disney Plus as a service got pushed so hard so early on because of the pandemic and all the other stuff that was happening. It got pushed really, really hard. You wanted a lot of stuff going to Disney Plus and you overshot. You overshot because I cannot tell you the amount of people that I know anecdotally in my personal life and people that I know on the internet that have talked about this. A lot of people, especially larger families, do not want to pay to go sit in a theater and spend hundreds of dollars to watch movies when they can wait about 30 to 45 days and these things are coming to streaming. That is a bad business model, no matter how you look at it. I can't imagine that the residuals and the, and the people signing up for these services makes up for what you're missing in the box office. I can't imagine that. And, and a lot of people in the industry that have talked about this also feel the same way. They don't think that it adds up. This is why you ended up in a lawsuit with the Black Widow film. Because those numbers aren't the same. They don't look as good. So you're missing a lot of time in the box office. I remember there was a time where you had to wait months after a movie came out of the theaters to see it at home. And as much as I love as a consumer the ease of being able to see these movies at home after I've seen them in theaters, there are a lot of people that are just skipping the theaters and waiting to watch it at home. Because they, they either don't care about spoilers, they're not online dealing with that all the time. There's a lot of reasons why. I think that's really hurt your brand. And it's hurt more than just Marvel. But Marvel is suffering from that. It is a big deal. Look at the Marvels. The amount of people that waited to watch it on streaming for whatever reason, whether it be astroturfing or general just disdain for going to theaters, they decided to stay at home and watch it on streaming because they knew it would be out shortly after it came out of theaters. And that is a massive problem. Also, where is Kevin Feige? Where is he at? This is the man who is in charge of everything Marvel everything MCU. He has been absent and vacant and just completely gone. I, I can't remember a time where I have not seen or heard from Kevin Feige for such a long period of time. Yes, we've had stuff talked about. Obviously, the X-Men cartoon, obviously the Fantastic Four news, obviously stuff with Deadpool and everything, but Kevin Feige has been very absent. And that is very weird. And it also makes me wonder, why is it that Kevin Feige and the people at the top over at Disney and Marvel why is it they are not to blame for the mistakes that are being made with the movies? And instead, you're not supporting the people who make the project. You're throwing them under the bus and you're making it seem like it's all their fault. Like, if you want us to be on board with you, the people that love this stuff, you cannot take the people making this and throw them under the bus and act like you have no responsibility over it. You are the ones that hired these people to work on these projects. You have to take some responsibility for it. Acting like it's not your fault and just throwing them under the bus like you've done with the last couple things, it's not cool. It's not good. And most of us don't like it. I know I don't like it. Certainly there are issues with the construction of a movie and how it comes together. But I think placing that blame solely on the creative side and not on the business side is a, is a bit problematic and disingenuous. Because you guys are the ones that decided to do this. Also, um, we're talking about making hits. That was another thing they talked about. So what does that mean? No more mid-level Marvel movies? We're not looking at the, at the option of doing something cheaper? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, of course the big movies, like the Avengers movies and the team-up movies, they're going to be a bit more expensive. But what about just the mid-level, like lower-level movie budgets where we get like a good solid story contained to a movie with a character we love from the comics? Is that not an option? Can we not go, hey, you know, why don't we do Ant-Man and the Wasp 4? take it back to a heist movie, reduce that budget by like 100, 120 million, and just really focus on that mid-range box office. Why, why can't we do that instead of just taking it off the table altogether? Why is that? Because clearly, like I stated before, that movie shouldn't have been a big risk. The third movie shouldn't have been a big risk. By the way, talking about risk, why was the Marvels a risk? You were banking on a billion, like a plus billion dollar movie on that second Marvels film. You were banking on that. That is the exact opposite of a risk. That's the exact opposite of it. That movie made over a billion dollars. Everything worked in your favor with that movie. The fact that you had to deal with the writer's strike, the acting strike, 
and then trying to include the TV characters into this movie. Just so many things that just were not done correctly that could have led into a movie that would have been another massive like $800, $900 million film for you. Y'all dropped the ball on that too. That shouldn't have been a risk. You were coming off of a a $1.1 billion movie. So that's just absolutely confusing to me. It's not just Marvel. A lot of movies are suffering. Okay, they are. Like we're seeing in the theaters, there's definitely an issue with cinema and theaters and what's going on there. I, I'm not, I'm not forgetting any of that here when I'm talking about this. But the last thing I want to talk about is this idea that you guys are going to try and cater to the community that's already given up on you. We're over here loving the stuff that you're making, supporting the stuff that you're making, right? We're the ones that went and saw the movies. When these guys weren't going, you know who went and supported the Marvels? You know who went and supported Quantum Mania? Us. We did. The ones who love those things, the ones who support those things. It's not our fault that the business side things fucked up. That's not our fault. We happen to enjoy those. But instead, you have this idea that we're going to subtract the things that we've spent the last five or six years building towards. We're going to subtract that to chase after another half maybe not even a half, another fraction of the community that is never going to love this stuff again. Those guys that you're chasing, they're never going to love this stuff again. It's a done deal. They have checked out. They've clocked out from from work. They're gone home. They're not coming back. They're not. So you're going to try and cater to that group to, to somehow make a movie a hit while completely destroying the fandom that you've been building up till now. Because you think that somehow magically catering to the people that have literally just shit all over your stuff, that that's somehow going to fix your problems. It's not. It's not at all. What you need to do, and you're not going to do this. You're not going to do this. Who am I? I'm nobody to you guys. What you need to do first is rethink your strategy with Disney+. Plus. You've got, you have trained them like the, the, the little bell ringing or whatever to, to tell them this dinner time. You have trained people that, that that's a thing. I don't know how you're going to fix that because you don't have a lot of content on Disney plus to begin with a lot of like consistently new content, but you need to, you need to do something with that. That's, that's the first thing. Secondly, you need to really support the creative people underneath of you that are making these films. Stop treating them like they're disposable. Stop throwing them under the bus when they do something that isn't completely 100% their fault. You need to have their back. You need, to, you need to prop them up, especially if you're doing a statement movie. If you're like, hey, we're allies. We're doing empowerment stuff. If that doesn't work, that is not the fault of the creatives. That is your fault for not supporting them and propping them up uh, on the business end. That's your fault. It's not theirs. Um, so if you're going to do that, you need to commit to it. And lastly, stop trying to win back over the people that have already clocked out. I know it's probably a tough pill to swallow, but all the people that are like Steve Rogers is my Captain America and bring back Tony Stark and we don't want to see, you know, uh, diversity in media or whatever. That crowd is never going to come back in drugs. They're never going to come back and support your stuff that way. Do not try and cater to them. If you want to make movies that you think a general group of people is going to like, that's fine. But this language you're using about like risk and hits and all of that and then canceling like women-led media canceling diverse media, things like that. We can see what's happening. We're not we're not stupid. And that community that you're trying to cater to, they're not stupid either. They're going to see right through it and know that you're basically, there's blood in the water. There's blood in the water. They have wanted you guys to fail for so long. And the fact that you think that you're just going to win them back over is laughable to me. It is absolutely laugh- laughable. So my thoughts on all this is it's kind of a mess at the moment. I don't know where Kevin Feige is. I don't know what kind of business decisions they're making over there that seem to be in favor of the fans. It feels like it's not. It feels like it's the exact opposite of that. Every lesson that gets learned by Hollywood when it comes to the mistakes they make is always the the wrong lesson. I can't remember who said that. I think it was Chris Stuckman that said this one time, that Hollywood will always learn the wrong lessons from things that don't work for them because they just do not see what's right in front of their faces. And a lot of that has to do with being completely disconnected from the fandoms. The fandoms is such a weird situation for the communities, uh, you know, in terms of like connecting with the corporate side that I just don't think there's a bridge. 
Kevin Feige was supposed to be that bridge, but again, he's missing. I don't know where he is. So with that being said, we're going to wrap this video up. I just wanted to talk a little bit about this because it is kind of a weird situation for me. And I'm curious what you guys think about it. So tell me what you think is wrong with Marvel. Everything that's wrong with Marvel. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on that uh, down below. And um, I will see you guys in the next video. So take care and see you later.